I've got a very sort of keen um, appetite for learning and a curiosity. And I think that that's sort of been my drive to get to where I've got to. And, and I was also thinking that in order to be successful, I think you also have to have failed in your life because otherwise you don't really get that sort of tangibility as to what success is. So, you know, at school, I was very, a very diligent student. I really liked learning. I always wanted to be top of my class. I think I was a bit competitive. And to me, that was success, that demonstration of being a master at what you do, being the teacher's pet, getting high grades and measuring yourself in that way. And I think that was good in some respects, but I think what took me to that next stage was actually not uh, getting into Oxford when I, um, when I did my A-levels. So, you know, always been a model student, always been top of the class, and then to not get to where you've always projected yourself it was a real setback, actually, or at least mentally it felt that way. I think I had to deal with not being good at something or not getting what I wanted to get by hard work and, and just achieving it. And so that sort of shaped my approach to making sure that I empowered myself to get to where I want to get to rather than taking things for granted. So that was definitely the case. And, and then when I went to university, I went to the University of Kent. Uh, I had a really good time there because I just threw myself into it because I think I wanted to find what sort of made me who I was and what sort of, you know, how I could redefine myself by not sort of having that badge of, yes, you got into Oxbridge, therefore you are all these things, all these things are assumed about you. So I think that was a, a big learning experience when I was sort of entering the idea of law. As I've got older, it's become much more subtle. It's more about sort of being happy with yourself and where you've got to being proud of your achievements rather than what you haven't achieved I think that's quite an important sort of nuance I'm probably quite a resilient person in that the way that I look at my achievements or lack of achievements or where I haven't succeeded it's not dwelling on them too much but always looking at them in a way as an enabler rather than something that's going to hold you back and then finally probably it's about sort of paying it forward so taking those negative experiences and trying to make the world easier for others to navigate on the back of my own experiences, I think is something that has made me feel much more comfortable with failing because if you don't have a story and you don't fail, it's difficult to inspire others sometimes because they can't really relate to your story. So if you're always saying, yes, I'm top of the class and I'm a genius, I'm the best, that really does marginalize other people and doesn't make them feel like they can connect to you. So. I think a lot of my leadership and the way in which I've managed teams and worked with people has been about trying to come across as not scary, for example, or you know, some people do see you as a high achiever. How do you make that more relatable rather than just people thinking, oh, well, you're like this, it's easy for you, or you're confident, therefore you get these things, they come to you. I think there's a much more sort of depth and nuance and difficulty that sits behind that, that I think being open about and having those discussions um, hopefully inspires others, but equally it helps other people succeed. So for me, it's about being open-minded with my own failures, being, being authentic, talking about them, and not focusing on my limitations, but on how I can enable others on the back of what I've learned. I've always struggled, if I'm being honest, with sort of the question of, well, who inspires you? Who is your inspiration? And, and sort of dealing with the first friend. I think the reason I've always struggled with that is because I find inspiration in everyone. And it sounds cheesy, but I mean, this is genuinely how I feel. There isn't one person for me, but I look for behaviours and traits in other people that I encounter that inspire me to do better. And that way, the world is like super inspirational then. You're not sort of putting all your hopes and dreams into one manifestation of, of, of perfect or who you'd like to be like, which is super dangerous because I think one of my sort of problems has been if you do aspire to be like others and you start comparing yourself to others, you see the veneer or you see the Instagram version of that person, but you're not actually seeing the whole truth. And I've always struggled with those figures of authority, if I'm being honest, in whether it's in business or in my home life, because if people don't show vulnerability to me, I do find it really difficult to connect because unless somebody can explain their 
super amount of confidence or they can explain these sort of behaviors to me it just feels a little bit fake I guess looking at, at who's there and the, who's there with your step of the journey I, I felt a bit sad sort of thinking about this one because I've, I've been fortunate to have some really good friends over the years and some of my best friends in moments in time have been those people that you just for that period of your life whether it's six months a year two years you just get that connection and you, you you literally are either inseparable or you just are on that same kind of plane but at some point in time that dissipates and maybe they find a partner or maybe their lives change maybe they move and you lose that so for me the way that that sort of friend resonated was you know I have had those friendships over the years and they've been there when that you need them but they're not always the same people but it's a super important person conceptually to have in your life and and to 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 learn those skills of of embracing the present and who's there for you in that moment but also letting them go when it's the end of that journey it's about recognizing potential I remember with with the, the friend that I bring along I think although <clears throat> although I think I acknowledge that I'm not going to be the best at everything you may not be the best at something in her I could see all this potential and and how just kind of extending a helping hand, helping sort of be somebody's friend, be there for them. And then just seeing them flourish. And even though you can't claim that yourself, that's not you doing that, but actually being part of their journey and, and facilitating that, I think is definitely something that has shaped me as a person and me in my personal and professional life. And, and, and what actually you know, really does, does drive me and, and makes me who I am today, I guess. The idea to sort of why are you here and what are you here to achieve and what do you want your legacy to be and and for me that it's all about sort of leaving the wood pile higher than you found it and you know inspiring others to be the best of themselves and so it's not just you you're focusing on having that impact you're trying to help others have a, a better and more exponential impact and that's what definitely drives me and I think as I said before you know learning from my own mistakes but not if there's anything that's like hardship or anything horrible I felt I really don't want anybody to feel that themselves it's coming from that place of like empathy and care if I've been through something bad I don't want somebody else to feel those bad things if they can avoid it or we can sort of make it less painful and I can sort of help them with that that makes me feel really good and also trying to put that onto myself as well I'm probably somebody who likes focusing on others but do, I still do struggle we've talked about that internal sort of dialogue and you know my, my kind of reflection on things over the years but I still do struggle with that and so I think knowing that life is a journey and you're, you're it's a constant learning experience and it's that growth mindset you're not fixed in the way that you kind of were brought up and that's not all you have I think sort of thinking widely and sort of being comfortable with that and seeing where things and paths take you and that open-mindedness is what kind of drives me so having a sense of where I want to get to but also enjoying the scenery along the way. And if that journey changes, not panicking, but actually sort of being excited about it and not scared. And I think, you know, definitely, as you said, you know, we are in a, we have been going through a lot of change over the last couple of years. I mean, can you, can you imagine hearing about what was going to happen two years ago? You wouldn't have believed it, but we've all gone through it. And we should all be super proud. But I think, you know, it's that sort of, challenge of balancing just surviving and, and getting through it but also recognizing when you can thrive and that, that it's okay if you're not always thriving <clears throat> but as long as you're sort of gradually moving in the right direction and you feel good about it then you know that that's a good thing <laughs>